Hello and welcome to this design practice 2 module 4. Uh, we were talking and discussing about two dimensional and three dimensional transformations and how computationally you can try to predict uh, the mapping you know after any uh, operation in space uh, related to objects. And when we are talking about uh, multiple operations done to a single object, uh, obviously there has to be a, a combined form of equation to compute the final uh, coordinates given the initial coordinate values. And so, in practice uh, a series of transformations may have to be applied in such cases where you need to uh, modify the object through you know sequential geometric operations and the technique of combining series of transformations are sort of very useful because it makes computation uh, very fast. And uh, something like this would emerge which uh, highlights the different transformations that are to take place to a vector v in order to give the final value v dash. And so, for a sequence of uh, coordinates which represent a certain geometry in space, if these uh, series of uh, H matrices which are nothing but the homogeneous form of the matrices uh, executing different operations like rotation scaling, translation so on so forth are applied then quickly you can find out a set of final coordinates given all those uh, transformations in between. Uh, this will uh, be more clear when we talk about an example problem where we will actually apply this theory and show you how rotation can be carried out of a three dimensional object a complex three dimensional object in space. Let us uh, look at this problem. So, we consider in this particular uh, example problem an object here uh, with respect to uh, x, y, z uh, Cartesian coordinate uh, Cartesian uh, axes and uh, the various uh, uh, coordinates of the different points of this 3D objects from A to F are mentioned here 353, 753 so on so forth up to uh, the value of F being 363. So, we want to execute a rotation here and rotation has to be uh, by 30 degrees and further in the clockwise direction along the y axis. So, the y coordinate does not change and uh, if we supposing uh, have the rotation around the uh, point d about the y axis, we are talking about this side which is actually parallel okay, to the y axis. So, we want to rotate this in space by 30 degrees okay. and we want to find out what is the final transformed coordinates between A to F which describes this object so that we can re-represent after rotation the whole object in space. So, this is a very simple operation of a drag and rotation kind of an uh, operation which you normally do on a CAD platform. But what I want to show you here through a series of these uh, geometric transformations is how complex is the computation the back end computation which keeps on happening and obviously because of the processor speed you can get immediately uh, the re-representation uh, probably within uh, you know less than a microsecond probably would be taken for doing all this so that you can immediately almost view uh, the object being reconstructed. Okay. So, in this particular operation because we have mentioned about rotation carried out along the uh, you know along a certain plane. Uh, this happens to be the x z plane along which the rotation would happen. Also, we uh, must uh, remember that the rotation cannot just happen at this point in space because the vectors that we talked about while generating the rotation equations were typically with respect to the origin. So, therefore, this set of points being several vectors have to be mapped with respect to the origin in order to see what is the rotation being carried out about the origin. So, a best strategy here which will simplify the process is to translate the object from its existing location back to the origin. This is shown in figure B here the object comes uh, to the origin and then you rotate the object around the origin by uh, you know about the y axis about the d point actually about the d e line because e and d are almost parallel to the is, the is parallel to the y axis. So, rotate the object by 30 degrees in the clockwise direction in the x z plane around the y axis after translating it to the origin. So, d becomes the origin. So, therefore, we need to apply a translation equation to these set of coordinates where we exactly deduct the coordinates by minus 3, minus 5 and minus 5. So, that d becomes 0, 0, 0 and the remaining become in accordance you know uh, the new coordinates. 
and then after performing rotation and using the rotational matrix, we again retranslate it back. For example, from D to C, from C to D, you can see that object is now rotated. The final coordinates are formulated, and at D, you are retranslating it back uh, by 355. Five, this particular value, so that the position of D doesn't change, or probably in this case even E doesn't change because D and E are parallel to the y-axis. The remaining others change because of such a translation and it gives you an idea of what is going to be the final coordinates a dash, b dash, c dash, d dash, e dash, f dash of the object. So, this is quite complex. So, you are going back to the origin, rotating at the origin, taking it back into space, into the same point and these three set of transformation equations can be applied by again this concatenation theory, where h 1, h 2, h 3, three matrices are multiplied with the initial vector uh, position, which actually represents all the, the set of all points, you know, which are in this particular uh, figure. So, there are about six points which are there. So, we can try to have a matrix with all those six points and then try to have a homogeneous transformation on that with different transformants. One of them is translation into origin. So, that is the first transformant. The second one is rotation about the origin, that is the second transformant. Further, this rotation would be around the y axis. So, we represent h y and then again translating it back. So, that that is the third transformant and so it is actually a series of multiplications being performed to the initial vector containing the initial point. So, we want to actually solve this problem now and try um, doing the uh, or calculating physically the coordinates given the uh, the values a to e which we have already a to f that we have already as initial values of the of the of the figure so since we know how to rotate an object about the origin, we need a sequence of the following fundamental transformations. First, we translate, let us call this operation the T 1 operation, the object at the reference point D to bring it to the origin. Then, we rotate we call this R 1 about the x axis or oh sorry about the y axis and finally, we translate we call this operation T 2 the point D from the origin to its original position. So, the whole transformation concatenated equation can now be written as the V final that is the final coordinates of V point V equals the multiplication of three different matrices T 2 R 1 T 1 to the initial coordinate matrix of the geometry that is at hand. So, we want to now gauge what are those uh, different coordinate geometries which are in hand. So, I can say that the V initial in this case 
can be represented as a matrix comprising of all the different points, the 6 points. So, it is a 6 by 4. So, we call this 3, 5, 3, 1, 7, 5, 3, 1, 7, 5, 5, 1. Let us keep uh, separating these entities through commas, so that there is no confusion. And then we have 3, 5, 5, 1. Uh, we have 3, 6, 5, 1 and we have 3, 6, 3, 1. So, let us just shorten it a little bit just to uh, change the layout a little bit. So, that is how the initial uh, matrix can be written. This can be plugged back into this zone right here and let us look at the different other transform and matrix which could be uh, used here. So, I will write T 1 and so as you know the T 1 transformation is about translating the uh, figure in a manner so that D becomes origin. So, in this event we will have a transform written as 1 uh, 0 0 minus 3 0 1 0 minus 5 0 0 1 minus 5 0 0 0 1. So, this is the first transform in T 1. Similarly, we will have the rotational matrix R 1 uh, and this can be because it is a clockwise rotation. So, angles in the clockwise directions are treated generally as negative angles and of course, the rotation is about uh, y. So, we are talking about h y here. So, this is cos of minus 30 degrees. Please refer to your notes from earlier modules where I have already mentioned this for an angle theta 0 sin of minus 30 degrees uh, 0. And similarly, 0 1 0 0 and minus of sin of minus 30 degrees 0 cos of minus 30 degrees 0 0 0 0 1. So, that is how R 1 is and then we have transmission matrix T 2 represented as again 1 0 0 and now it is plus 3 because obviously, you have to translate the d back from uh, the origin to its initial position. So, plus 5 0 0 1 plus 5 again and 0 0 0 1. So, these are the 3 different operations okay, or concatenations that serially have to be applied to V initial, so that you could obtain V final. So, just to uh, notice here that the angle in equation is minus 30 degrees indicating clockwise rotation. This is the normal sign convention that we are following from trigonometry. So, that is how angles are symbolized. And so, if I wanted to actually now apply the transformation equation V final equals T 2 R 1 T 1 times of V initial and I computationally calculate uh, what I am going to get in this particular case is upon concatenation. you know you remember that uh, V dash was a series of such transformant matrices 
which would lead to the calculation of the final coordinates given the initial coordinates. So, we will have in this case v final as, so I am going to now write down the different terms here. So, in one case we will have 3 plus um, 2 sin of 30. we will have 3 plus 4 cos of 30 plus twice sin of 30 in a similar manner we will have 3 plus 4 cosine 30, 3, 3, 3 plus 2 sin 30. Similarly, the second y coordinate would be 5, 5, 5, 5, 6 and 6. You can see the y coordinate does not change really. Um, from the initial to the final because rotation is around y. So, the x has changed quite a bit and now we will also calculate. So, this is the concatenated form. I am not for the simplicity sake, I am not doing the whole computation. I, I understand that I expect that you will do it, um, you will uh, put all the rigor for the different multiplication steps between T 1 and V final, R 2 and T 1 V final and then again T 2 and the whole. Um, product which is there. This is actually the whole product that I am representing here. So, then we have 5 minus twice cos of 30 degrees, um, we have 5 minus twice cos of 30 degree plus 4 sin of 30 degrees, uh, we have 5 plus 4 sin of 30 degrees we have 5, 5 and 5 minus twice cos of 30 degrees and similarly we have 1, 1, 1, 1 as a dummy variable everything coming off. So, if I wanted to compute, uh, compute this and simplify it further, so simplifying further would yield the new coordinates of the rotated form. Vector so, the V final becomes equal to 4.00, 5.00, 3 3.27. I am just compute, I am just uh, trying to simplify through computations, okay, whatever has been re represented in the earlier step. So, you have 7.46, 5.00, again the dummy variable, you have 6.46, 5, 7 and the dummy variable you have again 3, 5, 5, 1. Note that the position D does not really change and so does not E. So, the E also is similar 3, 6, 5, the dummy variable 1 and then finally, the, the, the point F changes to 4, 6, 3.27, 1.00. So, if from this I extract what are my new positions a dash, b dash, c dash, d dash, e dash and f dash. So, I would be like able to uh, you know write a dash as 4, 5, 3.27, b dash as 7.46, 5, 5.27, c dash as 6.46, 5, 7, d dash as 
the same value 355, E dash to be the same value 365 and F dash to be 4, 6, 3.27. So, that is how the coordinates change, these are the final forms of the, the coordinate given the values A to F as in the question earlier. So, after this rotation, this is how uh, the new coordinates have to be mapped and based on that, it will give you an idea of how the object is going to be like. So, I am going to close this module now and then in the next module, we will do um, some more modifications or some more studies related to solid modeling and then how you can actually get into plotting of 3D surfaces. And uh, from there, we will go from just regular objects to irregular objects, where we will use some theory and some concepts of fitting into different situations, so that you have different geometries or a family of curves, which can roll out. So, we will try to uh, cover up in the next one or two modules, more or less the regular geometries part and the solid modeling part. As of now, I would like to end this module. Thank you very much.